Well, I thought we'd talk about something um, which, you know, I've been looking into anyway because um, of part of my cryptography teaching, but it's the linear feedback shift register. Right? Now, what I really like about them is it's unbelievably simple in structure and yet it can produce incredibly complicated seemingly output, which I think is really, really cool. They're used a lot, so they're used in things like random number generators. They are used to an extent for cryptography as well as, as elements of stream ciphers. They're also really easy to code, right? And we'll perhaps have a look at one later. An LFSR or a linear feedback shift register is just a set of bits and we're going to have some rules about what we do to move those bits around. Right, so let's start with one that's, let's say, of length four. Okay, so I'm going to draw my little shift register here. Right, and I'm going to kind of initialize these at random. So I don't know, one, zero, zero, one. Right, so this is four bits. Each one can be a zero or a one. And um, this outputs the bit at the end. So this is going to be outputting one. And this is called the state. So let's see, well, what do we do with this to make it more interesting? Because at the moment it doesn't do anything. Well, what we're going to do every time we iterate, we're going to replace the state with a new one, and we're going to begin by shifting everything to the right. So 1001 shifted one to the right becomes 100. The one disappears, right? and then we have to have something to go in here. If you just did this in programming, it would become a zero, but this is a linear feedback shift register. So what we're going to do is feedback some linear combination of these, which we call taps. Right? So I'm going to say, let's say, take this one and this one. We're going to XOR them together. Do you remember about XOR, right? And then we're going to come in here. So XOR is one or the other, but not both, right? So XOR of zero and one is one. So that's going to be a one, right? And then this outputs a zero, right? And then we're going to iterate this over again, right? And so you can see that this has changed and it's going to change again, it's going to change again, and let's see how it goes. So the next state, we're going to shift one to the right, so one, uh, one, zero, and then zero x or zero is zero. And we're going to go again, so zero, one, one, x or is one, right? So far, so good. So I'll work my way through these, give me a minute because there's actually quite a few of them. Uh, one, zero, one, and that's zero. One, one, and that's a one. Oh, all ones, that's exciting. Most exciting bit so far for me. Right, let's keep going. One, 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 and that's a zero. We're getting there. Not one, one. I mean, if I made a mistake, it, we won't know until the end. Um, and that's a zero, and then a zero, and this is zero, zero, one, and that's a one, right? And we're finally, thank goodness for that, back at the beginning. Right, which was our initial state. Now, this is going to output a 0, a 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this is the actual output of our little random number generator. So what's interesting about what I've just done, right, because it's just a load of zeros and ones. Well, the cool thing about this is it took quite a long time to repeat itself. And in fact, it actually took the maximum amount of time possible. Right? If you've got four bits, then there are two to the four possible zeros and one combinations you could have, but all zeros doesn't appear, because you can, you can imagine that if you had all zeros in here, it would always stay as all zeros, because zero x or zero is zero. You'd never get anything interesting. So zero never appears, all zeros. But this is a, a period of 15, I think, let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, thank goodness for that. Um, so it's a period of 15, and that's the maximum of, that's the maximum period for this little shift register here, right? So actually, if you have a shift register, which is n bits, then the actual period, the maximum period you could have is two to the n minus one, right? Which is two to the n, all the different combinations of noughts and ones, minus one, which is the zeros, which you wouldn't have. Right? Now, you might, what, what I really, what I think is cool about this, right, is this is an unbelievably simple structure. There's nothing to this. It's a shift to the right and a little XOR, and we've got all the possible combinations of noughts and ones. And this holds essentially for any length of bit of shift register. So if I had a 100-bit shift register, and I had these taps set up correctly, I could go through every possible combination of noughts and ones of length 100 before I cycled around again. Does taps stand for something, or is it just... No, taps is just sometimes the word people use for just tapping off these and coming in here. Right, it's got nothing to do with plumbing. We'll put that... <laughs> to my knowledge. Could we make this more complicated, right? So let's suppose we had an internal state that started with 1001 again. Let's say we're, we're going to, we're going to come off three taps instead and come back round to the beginning, right? Now, it looks to me like that's better than that, 
because there's more interesting XOR going on, it seems to be more powerful. So let's whiz through this one. We're going to shift to the, shift to the right, 100, and then 1 XOR 0, XOR 1 is 0. All right, so we're going to put that in here, and then we're going to shift to right again, so uh, 010 um, and 0000, zero, zero, zero. that's so far so good. And then the next one is 001 and 0 X or 1 X or 0 is 1, right? And we've already found ourselves back at the beginning, right? Now this is a deterministic random number generator in the sense that if you're in some state and you've got your rule, you're always going to produce the exact same state that you had before, right? It seems obvious. So this repeats itself after what? 1, 2, 3. It has a period of 3. So choosing these taps is quite important, right? Now mathematically, we're not, we won't dwell on some maths, but there are mathematical ways to choose these taps in such a way that you can guarantee it will produce the maximum period for some LFSR of some length, right? And that way you can take a lot of the unknowns out of this. You don't have to plow through two to the 128 different combinations of bits before you realize, oh good, it has got a long cycle, right? Um, so let's have a go at coding this up. It's super straightforward. These, these um, they're not hugely efficient in software because you have to spend a lot of time looping and, and shifting things around, doing a lot of unnecessary XORs. In hardware, you can imagine that you could literally just have some gates here and just do this. And each of these could be a flip-flop. And maybe that's a good project for Steve to build at some point, right? The cool thing about LFSRs is um, they are unbelievably easy to program, right? Because all you do is a bit of bit shifting and you've basically done it, a couple of XORs. Um, Python allows you to do this. Python is a slightly odd language in a way to do bit shifting and things in because it has these arbitrary length integers. But it works, so let's have a go. Let's do our four bit uh, little, little shift register. Let's not get too carried away, right? So state equals a binary value of 1001. Well, let's do 20 iterations to begin with. So for i in range 20, that's so, so far so good. And then each time we loop, we want to output a value, which is you know, the current last bit, and then we want to um, do the shifting. Do the shifting. In fact, let's not output a bit, let's just output the whole state because then we can see it and we can see the period and things like this. I hate string formatting. Right. So let's do a print uh, and then we're going to print our state in binary format, which in, um, we can use using a string format. So it's going to be something like uh, 04b.format state. Right, let's see if that works. So that should print out our state 20 times, but it's not actually updating anything because I haven't coded that. So let's see. Uh, yes, it worked. 21001s. It's the least interesting program ever. Let's keep going. Yeah. All right, so now we need to actually update. So what we'll do is we'll do a shift, but we'll also, we need to calculate the new bit. So let's say new bit is equal to, and then remember, what we wanted to do was calculate some XOR of bits one and bit zero, where coming from the right hand side. All right, so let's do an XOR of the state. XOR is the hat operator in Python and in many languages. And we're going to also XOR it with state shifted one to the right. All right? So what's that doing? Well, let's get my piece of paper. If our state was one, zero, zero, one, and we're XORing that with our state shifted one to the right, then we're XORing that with 0100, which means that the output's going to be 1101, but it's the last bit is the one we want. So now we're going to just, let's put my pen down before I draw all over my brand new laptop, and it's permanent as well, and then we're gonna end that with one and just take the last bit. Right, so that's our new bit. Now, obviously all we need to do now is shift our state to the right and put our bit at the front. So we're going to say state is equal to state shifted shifted one to the right. Okay, and then we're going to OR that, which will essentially set our bit on the left-hand side with our new bit, and we're going to shift that into the right position. So that's going to be, it's in the zero position, it's going to one, two, three, three, three to the left. Right. Just like that. Right. And I think... That's done, that's it. So let's just print that out and see what happens. Uh, and that's exactly right. So what it does, it starts with 1001, 1100, and it goes on and you can see down here somewhere, 15 um, iterations on, we get 1001. Right, now, in, in actual fact, what you wouldn't do is print out the state because the state doesn't change much between iterations. It just moves one to the right, only the left bit changes. If you're actually using an LFSR for, let's say, a random number generator, you wouldn't output the whole state 
because all the state is is the state shifted to the right, so it would look very similar each time. So what we instead do is just output the last value. So instead of printing out the whole state, we'll just output the last bit. So all we need to do is remove this and we'll just say, we want to print out state and one. Now in Python, it's very difficult to avoid putting a character return on the end, so I'll just put in um, end equals nothing, right, like that. And let's try that. Um, and you can see it just prints out now a little binary stream, which we could theoretically use as a random number generator, or we could use it as a, I mean, you'd be unwise to use it as a stream cipher, but it, it could be a component of a stream cipher. Let's make a little bit of a bigger one, because that's much more interesting. Right? I'm gonna now make a 128-bit cipher instead. So first of all, instead of our state being just 1001, which is not very interesting, let's make our state one shifted 127 to the left, or, one, right? And so that's going to be one, zero, 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 one, where it's 128 bits long, right? It's a much bigger uh, LFSR. And we don't want to um, only output 20 bits. So let's just do while true and just break the whole, you know, just go on forever. And um, we're still going to print out the state and we're just going to change our taps slightly. So I happen to know a set of taps, there's a few different combinations, obviously, um, for this particular LFSR are 0, 1, 2, and 7. If you XOR those together, then you're going to get that whole maximum period of 2 to the n minus 1. So let's put that in. There you go. So what I've done is I've got the state, which is, you know, shifted no times, then shifted one time, shifted two times, and shifted seven times, and 1 to get only the last bit. And then we're going to do the same thing as before. State is state shifted 1 to the right, and then we're going to shift our new bit 127 positions to the left and put it right in on the end. All right, now, that should work. I mean, let's not verify it, <laughs> my coding live. But if we, if we run it, it's just going to start printing out noughts and ones. Now this LFSR has a period of 2 to the 128 minus 1. Let's say for the sake of argument 2 to 128. This laptop, given that it has to output to the screen, is doing probably around a million bits per second. We'll probably be waiting for 10, 20 times the lifetime of the universe before this repeats itself. So I don't know how much SD card memory you've got on your camera. What's the actual use for this system? So these are used all the time for random number generators. Advanced versions of these are used for some of the most popular random number generators, right? The statistical randomness of these streams is really, really good. And what I mean by that is this will appear as random as just fl flipping a coin, right? So if you want to just generate coin flips, this is a great way to do it. This is not cryptographically secure because if you have a large portion of the stream, you can just essentially solve a bunch of linear equations and recompute the LFSR that generated it and then generate the next sets. So it's essentially you can reverse engineer based on some output what the next bits will be, which is exactly what you don't want if you've got a stream cipher. But if you join some of these things together, so let's say you have two stream ciphers that are XORed together and maybe they don't always tick over and shift at the same time and things like this, if you've got some non-linear combination of stream side, uh, of LFSRs, then you, you actually can have something that's pretty, pretty robust. And this has been used in the past for uh, mobile phone encryption and um, you know, the Trivium cipher is based on this. So it, they do see a lot of use and they're unbelievably quick in hardware, which of course is really, really useful for low powered devices like smart cards and stuff like that. Do not try this at home. No, Absolutely. only try this at home. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a very good point. Try this at home, but not anywhere else at home. In some sense. Remember when we talked about 3D images, you could view RGB as in some sense 3D. So the first plane is R, R, G and B, or vice versa.